Uh, the first text coming in, can COVID-19 be introduced into the body through breaks in the skin like a cut or an abrasion? Um, one would expect so. Um, Walt, it's nice to be back, by the way. Um, that is, the virus will get in uh, in any way it can, usually mucous membranes into the lung and invading, but it can get into the bloodstream if you've got a cut. So you want to bandage that and uh, bandage it well enough if you've got a cut to protect yourself. We also know it's coming in through a fecal oral route. I mentioned that, I think, last time or the time before, um, Paul Offit of Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania, showed that uh, uh, GI symptoms are common in Korea and China, and he's proven right. Mm -hmm. Fe so fecal oral transmission, that means you want to heat your food to 140 degrees for 15 minutes before you eat it, even takeout food. Okay. Next question coming in is, I'm a senior. I still need to go to the grocery school, uh, store. If not a mask, can a bandana or covering my nose with cloth help when going to the grocery store? Doctor, we're getting a lot of um, media about the mask, bandana, scarf situation going yeah, on. So the, okay, I show even us. Have one, I even have one here, okay. Walt. Um, and so you're protecting other people. It doesn't protect you very much. It does protect others. Um, a couple of things we have learned. So you want to wear a bonnet or hat or some, even a baseball cap, because what we've learned is, in fact, in these just between people, even in grocery stores, it gets on your hair and it spreads from there. Um, so we don't know how that spread is occurring. But that's one of the things they noted in the hospitals in Seattle. Um, and so wearing a hat or bonnet, important, uh, in fact. So that's a new, that's new today or yesterday. Um, so those are all things. But you're protecting mm -hmm. from wearing that uh, bandana does help protect other people. Because, okay. in other words, the droplets don't get through. Right. The aerosols do get through. So that's why um, distance is really important. Okay, the next question is about, uh, you know, uh, good hygiene. The text is, does it matter if you use antibacterial soap or regular soap for hand washing? Uh, it doesn't matter. The antibacterial soap protects against bacteria, not viruses. But the, this virus is very sensitive to any detergent. It breaks apart that lipid molecule that protects it and thus falls, the protein RNA falls apart. So the message is any detergent seems to work and it doesn't take a lot of concentration of a detergent. Okay, next one uh, coming in now, 916-321-3310. I'm having medical conditions aside from COVID-19. I can't get into the doctor's office until August. So what should I do? Should I go to the ER? Um, there is telehealth. That is the video health. So here at the Cleveland Clinic, something like 90% of our non-emergent, um, that is non-COVID-19 or other emergencies, are being handled by telehealth visits. I, ha I see patients tomorrow, and I have a lineup of, of patients via telehealth instead mm -hmm. of my normal in-person. So telehealth works very well. Um, and uh, the government has made it so that we or the hospital, I, in my case, the Cleveland Clinic gets reimbursed for my services uh, via telehealth, um, and almost every insurance mm -hmm. company, as well as Medicaid and Medicare, are participating in that okay. telehealth. Okay, that's uh, good to know. Okay, that's, And we're gonna... so that's the easy way. If okay. you've got something urgent, then um, I would call ahead to the emergency room and see whether they want you to go to an urgent care center right. or the emergency room before you go, because many emergency rooms are just handling COVID. Right. In some places, they're doing it the reverse way, where the emergency rooms are handling the non-COVID and urgent care the COVID. All right, doctor, thank you. We'll have more questions for Dr. Michael Roizen, and we'll get to that after a quick break. 916-321-3310, your text questions.
facts, not fear. We're talking with Dr. Michael Royzen, Chief Wellness Officer Emeritus, Cleveland Clinic, Chairman of Persona's Medical Advisory Board. If you have a question for the good doctor, there he is. He's ready to roll. 916-321-3310. All right, next text. I've had a temperature that hovers around 99 for a few weeks. No other symptoms. Should I worry? Um, no other symptoms, and you've had it for a few weeks. Um, you always worry, but not very serious worry. So um, whatever is going on seems to be stable for you. Um, this gets worse and gets short of breath. So where do you worry? Is if you start to get short of breath, you get rigors or shaking chills, or you have something else that points to a source of the fever. 99 for some for many people isn't a fever so mm -hmm. i wouldn't worry about it unless you get one of those other symptoms okay next one coming in um what should we say to people who are not practicing social distancing while standing in line at the grocery store those people blocking doorways etc do, do you say something or that's probably not in your wheelhouse is it um, that's not my my expertise, but I just move away from them. I mean, no reason to to risk it. And if they move with you, um, then I would say something. But I would move. I would try and get as far from them as possible. Yeah, not everybody's going to play ball. Next text coming in uh, saying, "I'm 67, taking care of the grandkids a few days a week to help. What precautions should I take? Is this safe, Doc?" Um, well, the grandkids are. If they get exposed to a lot of other people, if they're in ch children's groups or play groups or their parents are exposed to a lot of people and, and can expose them, um, if you're at risk, meaning you're 67, that's not as much risk as if you were 87. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've got diabetes or obese, smoke, vape, um, those are the things that increase risk substantially, okay. chronic kidney disease. So what we've learned from the Italian experience and the German experience and Korean experience is that the young people have a much lower risk of serious, it's not zero, but have a much lower risk of serious adverse events. Mm -hmm. So taking care of the, of the kids, um, maybe you can have them wear bandanas as if they're um, if you will, in, in a cowboy and Indian old time battle, or uh, I guess uh, one of the uh, Westerns of yesteryear and wearing that bandana, if they keep a bandana on, it'll help protect you. All right, that's, that's good advice. And then I, I'm imagining the old days, I got it. Okay, uh, I will tell you this with the next text, when I start to get the onset of a little bit of a sore throat, I do the hot salt water gargle. Uh, this text says, it's been said, if you do that, it helps prevent coronavirus along with drinking hot teas or just water. It, it, does any of that help? Um, hydration clearly helps, meaning not getting dehydrated, not getting, uh, if you will, a temperature such that you lose fluid. So dehydration is one of the things we try and prevent for colds and mm -hmm. flu of all kinds. Mm -hmm. So any kind of fluid is better than no kind of fluid. We don't know if you feel better with a hot salt gargle and you've done this for years, then do it. Um, it may help, and we just don't have enough data for large right. populations. Right. It, we it, don't know why mom's chicken soup works so well. Maybe right. that's part of the hot gargle. Yeah. But in any case, it does work well against yeah. common colds. Yeah, okay. We don't know. All right, doctor, thank you. Um, influenza I know. or coronaviruses. Okay.